welcome back to the Moshik's Mainframe channel. This is Moshik's. I released a video yesterday called uh, Passing Parameters to Mainframe Assembler Programs, and that's M203. Um, in fact, uh, we are already up to uh, 208 to 209, so 209 videos in the Moshik's uh, YouTube channel. And I actually never sat down and celebrated the 200th uh, video. But um, there's nothing to celebrate because in the uh, in this video where I described how to handle uh, parameters being passed to an assembler program, a uh, which I just sat down and uh, wrote ad hoc, so I did not really plan for it, and I was not. It was late at night, and so I was not in my best shape. And what happened is that um, is that an error sneaked in, and one of the viewers, in fact, I think the very first one, Dean Horak. Um, he mentioned that there is uh, an error here in my program and this uh, I assume it's a him um, he's absolutely right and so let's see what I did wrong here and I think it's actually an excellent opportunity to learn something additionally from it uh, and indeed I did have a sneaking uh, feeling during the video that I did something wrong and I mentioned that maybe there would be a different way to do it and I sh actually should have done it. So let's see here what happens. Um, we have in this program uh, we get past a string as a parameter and it's the job of the assembler program to go and read these, uh, this, uh, this uh, parameter and uh, first of course uh, get the length of it and then get the uh, the payload itself which is one two three four five uh, now uh, the error that sneaked in uh, is in uh, in this instruction here uh, what you if you see here what i've done here is i i have a move character assembly instruction with uh, uh, displacement zero and and then I'm, what I was trying to say is uh, the put in the length um, of the parameter to be copied in this output string. What we're trying to do here is, is output the whole uh, parameter to the uh, operator console. And I think it's it's better if you just go and uh, watch this video here if uh, you're not familiar with what I'm saying here. But anyway, so and uh, and so I wanted to put the uh, the uh, the the string here one two three four five so the payload I wanted to put it here and uh, and so the um, the mistake that I made is that I'm I'm uh, I'm putting here register six register six uh, is supposed to contain the length of the payload and um, however. Uh, uh, as uh, Dean Horak, of course, pointed out, and I should have uh, realized myself, uh, is that this is not going to work, and it worked by coincidence. So, uh, as we saw in the video, the you know the program was actually seemed to work, but it only worked by coincidence, and the reason is the following. So this instruction is supposed to work like this: displacement zero, length, and base register, and then displacement and uh, and the register pointing to the source of the string to be moved. So in most assembler instructions on the mainframe, uh, the, the direction is from right to left. So this is the source and this is where it's gonna be moved to. Now, what happens here, you know, the way that I like to think when I program an assembler is I pretend to be the assembler myself. And so what is the assembler going to do? Uh, the assembler is going to see here displacement zero. That's fine. R6 is something that is not the length, obviously. So what will it though go and do? It will. It will take uh, R6 is meant to to mean six, and so the the, the assembler is just going to replace this R6 with six, and then off uh, register four. And as we know, register four uh, in this case points to um, Register 4 points to uh, the beginning of the WTO macro. And so while it seems to be working, so if we execute this, right, let's see, this is X, that's rhyme, so let's write it in B so we keep, keep this apart. So let's just run this uh, program and then uh, go all the way down. And it seems to be working. So we get the parameter length is 5, which is correct. 
and then the parameter uh, payload is one, two, three, four, five, which seems to be correct. Um, but the reason it's correct, and the, and I should have seen it uh, yesterday in the middle of the night, but I didn't, and um, is that there is an additional dot. What is this dot? Well, the, the, the reason why we have an extraneous dot here is that the assembler put in a six there, just because R6 equates to six. And we can actually go, if we look at the assembler, um, at the object code, we'll see what happens here. So we have D2, which is um, which is the uh, the opcode for the move character, and um, and then we have here uh, zero five and register four, and then displacement zero zero two. So um, zero five starting from from zero, that's six. And so what we see here is that the length is actually coded in, in the instruction. And that's why it seems to work, but it's not actually working correctly because the output is one, two, three, four, five, and then dot, which is not part of the parameter. So the program is actually wrong and Dean Horak deserves all the credit. And I think that Professor Renaud Furlan, my good friend from Montreal also uh, saw the mistake if I'm not if I'm, if I'm not mistaken myself again. So um, so the program is actually wrong. It is, it is in fact, uh, very wrong. And so how do we fix that? Uh, I think Dean Horak mentioned a solution, um, but I actually also had referred already during my video that the correct way to do this would be to use the execute instruction, which he also points to here, Dean Horak. What is the uh, execute instruction? So I pulled it up here uh, from this uh, uh, website I already mentioned yesterday. The execute instruction is a way to execute another instruction out of um, out of the normal uh, execution stream. So you can, um, and that's very useful sometimes when you like you have lookup tables and stuff like that. You can put an instruction somewhere else and then execute that instruction, but change some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, parameters of that instruction and and that's uh, of course the correct way to do this and that's how I should have done it yesterday and I did have a feeling why this feeling during why I was making the video that I was doing something wrong and uh, and uh, but of course the error is nicked in so that's an excellent opportunity for us to learn something and uh, and so I thought I'll make a video to correct this because I couldn't just set uh, let that video sit there with this uh, knowing that there's an error uh, it's just not right so let's go fix this all right so um, as you can see here the execute instruction and I'll make this bigger um, let's read this uh, for now make it comfortable to read the um, will have the execute instruction is uh, will uh, refer to an instruction located at displacement length and uh, base register and the copy of that instruction is made and the second byte of the copy is replaced by the rightmost byte of uh, R. So the copy of the instruction is then executed. So we are all able to take an instruction that is somewhere else, usually it's in the um, where the variable definitions are in an assembly program and then we make a copy of that instruction and then um, replace the rightmost byte of, of uh, uh, and then uh, and then execute that instruction so um, so this is this is a very good way for us to uh, actually make this program behave correctly all the time so how do we do this uh, we go in here and we say um, um, move character and something like this um, and we call it then um, we could call it uh, mvc um, displacement zero zero r4 and uh, of course displacement zero off register uh, two i think yeah so but basically we have this instruction this instruction here we copy it down here but as you can see here i live I, I live out the length of the of the of the copy execution 
of the copy instruction to be executed, I leave that as zero because we're going to go and replace that uh, before we actually um, get to issuing the uh, WTO macro. Uh, WTO, of course, means uh, write to operator. Um, so, um, so that's what we're going to do here. So we just define here, as you can see, this is where all the variables are. We just put it there. And then uh, instead of issuing this instruction here, the WC as we had it before, I make this a comment now. And now we can go and say, uh, execute um, R6, because in R6 we have the length and uh, what is it called? MVC instruction. Right, so by doing that, what's happening here now? Let's pretend to be the assembler. The assembler uh, is going to compile this all, and then when it's going to get executed, all this is going to be loaded in memory, in the virtual address space, including this uh, this instruction here. And now it's going to go and take this instruction, make a copy of it, and replace this zero here with the value of R6. And that's exactly what we wanted to do yesterday. But doing it like this, of course, is wrong because it just puts in a six because you see here, this equate where my mouse is right now. It says R6 equates to six. And so the assembler, when it assembles, it sees R6 and it just puts a six in there. And so it just seemed to work yesterday, but actually it was slightly off because of that dot that just randomly um, is there. And, some, and sometimes uh, you have non-human readable characters and so, uh, that's what Jess 2 made out of it, and that's why it seemed to work, but I should have paid attention that there was a dot after the payload, which of course was not in the parameters, because the, the parameter is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's no dot, but in the execution, uh, again, it uh, it was in here, and I assumed that Jess 2 saw an unprintable character, it could be any random, um, any random uh, value, and just replaced it with a dot, I think that's what's but just do it here. And of course, the plus here is when a job get execu gets executed and there's a WTO, the plus is showing what the operator says on her console and the, um, in the data center where usually where the uh, mainframe is running. So um, now that we fixed that, let's see if this works. So again, uh, we made this a comment and now we execute a copy of that instruction but change this value here. And that will be, of course, the proper way to do this. Um, let's go and execute this job 905. Sorry for the stuff beeping in the background. I guess that's the dishwasher announcing that it's finished uh, washing all the dishes. And 905. So um, let's go check. So return code zero, return code zero. And now we have a, uh, let's go see what happens. Yeah, it puts in the six here, um, and uh, which is the register in the right place. And then it uh, executes the, uh, the uh, WTO macro, and that seems to work fine. Now, I don't know if you noticed that, I immediately noticed that the dot is here. And actually the dot is there because the way that the JCL is coded, if we look at, um, uh, I don't know, my term is a bit slow today. Um, we have to have the slash here to pass the, uh, the parameter to the assembler program. And uh, it has to be that, that way because if we remove this, uh, you'll see that it will say actually no parameters passed. Um, 908, oops. See, uh, no parameters passed, so that's the that's the way to pass it. So we need to have the slash there, but then it's still counted. So we need to actually uh, have a way to remove the the slash, which is the way to pass it on to the assembler program. How do we do that? Well, there's several ways to do it, but um, um, what we can do is load uh, into register seven the value of one. Um, value of 1 into R7 and then we'll say subtract register R6 from R7 so this will subtract 1 from the 
uh, value of which is in register six and store it back again into register six. So now we actually have a way to remove this uh, the count of the of the slash. And let's uh, run this. And um, now I'm quite sure that the dot have, will have disappeared. Yes, and indeed the dot is gone because now we count properly without the uh, the uh, uh, the definition for passing the uh, parameter to the assembler program. Um, so it counts correctly five, and uh, and so we now have, uh, in fact, eliminated two errors from my very simple simple assembler program, and that teaches you, as uh, Professor Renaud Fallon says, never um, never just sit down and do things ad hoc. Uh, always try things, but in a way, I think that it's true for a professor. I guess that's the proper way to do it. But by doing things ad hoc, we learn several things, um, and um, experimentation is still a very good way to learn things. Uh, so I feel like we have now, uh, this program is now working fine. Um, I do feel like uh, it's not properly formatted in every place. The comments are all not aligned. And I will put the uh, this program uh, back into in the GitHub uh, repository. So if you go to Moshix on GitHub and then MVS, you will see that it's already here, but obviously that is the wrong version. I will update it with the um, with the with the correct version. Here it is. So uh, this obviously is not the correct one, but I will update it. By the time you watching this video, it will already be updated there uh, at the same spot. Uh, so I think we've seen a few things, and that's the proper way to uh, change an instruction before we execute it. And if you see, that's actually quite interesting. We're actually changing a few instructions before we execute them, right? So let's uh, remove the print no gen so we can get the macro expansion. And that's, let's run this again. Um, maybe uh, do to change things a little bit. We do six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, so now we execute this. Job nine, ten. Um, it does count properly as ten and shows the full payload. Um, but let's go see why we're changing two instructions before we execute them. So, so you can see here the um, let's go okay the what we're doing here is um, first we're changing the this instruction here by making a copy and putting in the length in this spot. So, and then we execute this change instruction, which is in memory, but we just make a copy and change it just before we execute it. And then this instruction in turn goes and changes um, the WTO instruction. So WTO, of course, is just a macro and the macro expands into uh, memory alignment and then um, into, um, into uh, this instruction. And so what we're doing actually is we're going and changing this place here, right? And so um, so what we're doing is first we change the move character instruction before we execute it. And then we change the definition of the macro before the macro gets executed. So that's, uh, that's one of the nice things that I like about the assembly. You have complete control of your program. Um, and of course, this is all because of the uh, Newman architecture uh, of all modern computers. As you know, uh, a Newman um, architecture computer is a, an is a computer where data and programs are all stored together and uh, in, in, in memory. And so there's no, there's no difference where code and programs, a code and data reside. And because code is just data, which is just uh, interpreted, 
um, uh, as, as, as code instead of being seen as data, uh, you can go and change things, right? So that's the uh, beauty of modern computing where uh, code is just data and you can go there and change it uh, while it's executing. And in assembler, you have complete control of your address space and you can, um, with the proper um, permissions, of course, and you can you can do amazing things. And, um, and that's what I really like about assembler, not just in the mainframe, um, anywhere and why I think um, that um, it's important to retain knowledge of the assembler uh, because then that's when you understand how the machine works. And too often uh, nowadays people want to be as far away or as remotely uh, as remote as possible from the machine and from the, and from the uh, architecture because uh, it's seen as not important then uh, yeah, you can do amazing things in JavaScript, etc. But it's you need to have an understanding of the computer to be truly efficient. I uh, recently ran a fast Fourier trend, um, a job that ran for I think 19 hours or 20 hours or something like that, and uh, it was a complex uh, mathematical job, and the whole job um, ran all this long, all this time for 20 hours, and the memory consumption was I think 36 kilobytes. 36 kilobytes, right? So uh, that's uh, that's one of the things you can do in assembler, extremely efficient. And I'm not saying that COBOL or PL1 optimizing compiler are not going to produce code that's just as efficient as handwritten written assembler, but um, but it's a lot of fun to control the machine. So anyway, that was just a brief excursion to why I like to do things with uh, with assembler, and of course, in the next installment of this mini series, we're going to look at parameter uh, passing, parameter handling in COBOL and PL1, and uh, and hopefully even in RPG. I know next to nothing of uh, RPG, and I want to say almost next to nothing about COBOL, but uh, enough to hopefully get this uh, uh, to show you how to accept uh, parameters. And of course, the other important thing that we should look at in uh, maybe one installment in this mini series is how to call programs um, from, let's say, from COBOL to assembler and from assembler to COBOL, even though we've had some of those videos in this channel in the past, and then look at, um, and then also do the parameter handling as well. So uh, that's it. I will update uh, this on the GitHub so you can play with it on your MVS 3.8. And uh, everything we're saying here also, of course, works for later versions of MVS and ZOS. And, um, but of course, um, we focus on MVS 3.8 in this channel. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.